Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you some useful techniques that you can use for finding companies that are hiring and decision makers in those companies as a recruiter using Apollo.io. And also, I'm going to preface this by saying if you only use Apollo.io, then that does have one massive disadvantage that comes along with it. And if you use only clay to try and do the same thing, that also has a number of huge disadvantages that come along with it. But if you combine Apollo and clay, you can get the best of both worlds. So we're going to dive in and we're going to start off by talking about the disadvantages of clay. So if you use clay's find jobs feature, the problem is that it doesn't give us many filters related to the actual companies. So if you want to find companies that are say between 11 and 50 people in a certain industry, then if you're just going to use these filters, then you're going to have a hard time doing that. You're going to have mostly irrelevant companies that are either too big or in completely different industries. So one workaround is to start with a find companies search and create a table of companies that meet your criteria and then use that clay table and then find jobs that way. The only problem is that let's say that you generate a list of companies first and let's say there's 10,000 companies in your list. When you use that list to then find jobs in those companies, you're probably only going to find jobs in about 100 to 300 of those 10,000 companies because it doesn't let you find companies in a certain industry of a certain size that are actually hiring for specific key roles at the moment. That's why Apollo has a huge advantage. So with Apollo, you can search for specific job postings that have been posted within a certain date range. For example, jobs posted within the last month that are located in say the United States and the job title is something like Java developer. If we just put in that criteria alone and we, we've put in companies between 50 to 80 people, Let's put in the company location or the person location, I should say, because we're on a people search. You can see now that we have 2,349 people in companies of that size that are searching for a Java developer since a month ago in the United States, right? If it's a Java developer role, you're going to want people who are CTO job titles like this. So one thing I like to do is to just go on chat GPT and I like to use the O1 model, which is using advanced reasoning. So this gets the best results when you want to ask it, for example, give me a comma separated list of decision makers in US companies of 15 to 80 people who would be involved in the hiring process for a Java developer job post. And then you can say, are we missing any? And it has output a few more. Are we missing any permutations of these job titles? Chuck those in and see what we get. Okay, so it's output these in an organized fashion, which is nice. Output those excluding HR and TA roles as a comma separated list. Once that happens, we'll be able to copy and paste those into Apollo as the decision makers that we want to use. And then I'm going to show you what the big disadvantage is of just using Apollo. I'll give you a hint right now. The problem gets worse if you start to look at companies with bigger employee headcounts, like 200 or 500 and so on. So job titles, paste those in and press enter. Also now I'm going to go back to chat and just say come a separated list of um, job titles to exclude irrelevant people from the decision makers search. Include all HR and TA roles. Those are all HR roles. What about other keywords like uh, to exclude individual contributors like coordinator, analyst, etc. 
we've gone from 2,300 people down to 456 people. If you wanted to widen the search to have a bigger lead list, one thing that you can do is not be so specific with Java developer. You could put in C Sharp developer, Python developer, full stack developer, blah, 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 blah. Do whatever you like. If you were going to export this list, you would probably want verified emails only. If you include catch-all emails, you have more people to reach, but you will also run the risk of having a higher bounce rate and burning your mailboxes a bit faster. It depends if you're going to use um, tools like Bouncepan or Enrichly that can verify catch-all emails to see if they're actually deliverable or not. Now you can see the list has gone from 456 or whatever it was to 207. Obviously in real life, we would want to widen the search by including other job titles that aren't necessarily Java. Now let's get on to the problem with it. So the problem is if you look at the companies, if sort by companies, you can see A2C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven people in A2C that come up in this search. Now, do you really want to contact that many people in a company? Maybe you do. Maybe seven is uh, still a healthy number of people per company for you to contact. But if you were to increase the employee headcount to say companies from like 10 to 200 people or more than that, you're going to see some of these lists are going to have people, you know, you're going to have like 20 people per company. And you do not want to contact that many people in a company because most of them will be irrelevant and will not be the stakeholder for that job. And secondly, Google and Outlook and Mindcast and Barracuda and Proofpoint and Spam Experts are going to see exactly what you're doing. And they're going to see that you're sending emails that look almost identical to each other to 20 plus people in the same company. How quickly do you think your mailboxes are going to get burned if you do that? pretty fast. So this is the huge disadvantage of Apollo and it is the reason why I like to combine Apollo searches with clay searches and I'm going to show you how I like to do that. We can find the companies that have job postings for specific roles like a Java developer and we know that in our list there are only those companies. We don't have a load of other companies that are hiring for receptionists or companies that are just not hiring at all. We have only companies that are hiring for Java developers in this list. So what we can do is split this search into two steps. The first step would be find the companies hiring for Java developers in Apollo and then find the people that we want to contact like all of these stakeholders and decision makers using Clay. Think about what you need to get from Apollo. So you know that in every single company, there is a CEO or a managing director or a co-founder or a founder or an owner. And so if we just focus on those job titles, then we can get that list of companies that are hiring just for these kind of people. We can export that list. We can import it into Clay and then we can do a people search in Clay with those exact companies that are hiring for Java developers and we can then find their CTO, their head of engineering, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, so we have all these, they look good to me. So let's go back to Apollo and we're going to clear this list of job titles now. Even though we have multiple people in this list, which is fine, we have all the companies, right, that meet our criteria that are hiring for a Java developer, which is what we want. So we can then export this list. We can then import the resulting list into a new table in Clay. And then once you're in Clay, you can then do a find people search. And then let's see, companies here. This is where you can say only find people in these companies. Engineering manager, software engineering manager, chief architect. Go to the job titles and put those in. The great thing about using Clay is you can set a limit per company of people. So you might want to say seven people because some of those people are going to be less qualified than other people, less chance that they're actually going to be a stakeholder for this position. 
the Java developer role. So you would probably want to set yourself a limit and say, I'm only going to contact five people per company. If it's five, you might want to say here, let's pull in seven people per company and then let's run a qualification step using ChatGPT inside of Clay to just see who is the most suitable person to reach out to. And you could even rank them per company from one to seven and then only contact people with ranking of one to five. And so that is the why I like to use Apollo combined with Clay to find these people. Once you've got that list of people, you can then do a find jobs search. We can then put in our companies being that, ex that same clay table that we've just generated. We know from Apollo that they're looking for, for Java developers and we can then search for the job titles of the uh, roles. So you might want to just put Java or whatever you want. Job type is very handy because it means if you only focus on full-time positions and you don't do contract, you can weed out or filter out all of those irrelevant job types. That is how you can find the jobs. So then you're going to have companies that are hiring for Java developers. You're going to have all the decision makers who are relevant for that job. You're going to be able to find the actual job data using this find job search within Clay. And then you can use Clayagent to find the job description without having to use your clay credits to pull in the job description. I'm just sharing ideas. So if you have any other ideas that can help to get better results for this kind of search, drop them in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't, because I have a ton more content like this coming out. And also if you would like us to help you to build custom workflows or help you to generate leads using clay, then click on the link in the description, book a time to talk with me and I'll speak to you soon.